Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, my apologies for the video schedule being kind of off last week, um, just given some of the different festivities we had going on. Um, I just kind of needed to post on, what was it, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here today. We did a little bit of traveling over the weekend. We actually drove, um, the trip ended up being, let's say six hours from where we live to about the southeast portion of Tennessee. We we're very close to Chattanooga. This is for Bub's side of the family. There's no member of the family that actually lives there, but it was more about finding like a midway point for everyone because he's got people coming up from Texas. Um, he's also got a sister who's in Virginia. We're coming from Southern Illinois, and this kind of ended up being a meet in the middle type of spot. We got there Friday. We left on Sunday. It was kind of a quick trip that we had 12 little kids eight and under in one space for that time in this Airbnb, and it was really, really neat to see all these little cousins who don't always get to see each other, you know, just get to run around and play and have a good time. And as you know, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm going to bring my makeup. <laughs> and I thought maybe I might talk about what I brought um, and sort of the logic behind the way I pack my makeup, what I would take on a random little trip like this for a couple days where maybe there's not any one certain event, you know, like one big dressy occasion that I'm getting ready for, but more so just general everyday life type makeup. I thought it would be interesting to maybe share why I pack the things I do, the type of bag that I use, which I think is really ideal, and yeah, just the nitty gritty of travel makeup. I thought that would be fun today. So this bag is from a brand, there's its little logo down here. It's called Person, it's like P-U-R-S-E and then N. And Kristen Game got me onto this brand. I believe it was when we had a little girls trip to Chicago a couple years ago and she got out her bag that was like this. I was just in awe of the storage capability, but yet the flexibility of it. For the longest time, I've used a Sonia Kashuk Weekender bag, which is nice. I do love that bag, but mine was getting a little beat up and I was definitely ready for something new. I believe the name of this bag is called The Stylist and there's some different, you know, overall looks to it that you can get. I have the black quilted one, but the really neat thing about it is that you're going to zip here and you've got a whole top portion here where stuff can be stored. And I believe it's a heat safe lining in here. Um, you might see on the website a picture of somebody like putting a small straightener up there in the top. For me, um, I don't believe it's quite long enough to store like one of my curling irons, but I love it for my brushes and keeping my brushes and tools separated here from the whole rest of my makeup. You know, I really think whatever makeup bag you use, it has to have something that's protecting your brushes rather than just throwing them in in a jumbled mess, you know, within the rest of your makeup bag. So I love this. Also, I will note, I am just using this for my makeup. You might be able to envision yourself using this bag for all different kinds of toiletries and hair supplies, you know, that's fine. Um, I'm just finding that it really works well for my makeup, um, storing everything but not making it too cramped. So again, in this top zippered pouch, I've got a little pouch that goes with me no matter what, everywhere I travel. I don't have to repack this every time. It just has some standard travel things. I have a mini size of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream which is really quite a good moisturizer. I find it's good for morning or night for me, so it makes a nice moisturizing makeup base, kind of on the level of Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base, although I don't like it quite as well. But, you know, it's nice all over the face as a night cream too, so I just have that little mini in there. Um, I have a mini lotion from Kiehl's in here. I keep a set of e.l.f. tweezers. e.l.f. makes the best tweezers in my opinion, these super cheap, like, $2 ones. So I always keep a pair in my little pouch so I never have to remove remember it. I got a little pencil sharpener, should I ever need that, and a little tube of Aquaphor as well. You never know when you or someone else is going to need it. I've also got some Listerine, like one of those little pocket packs of the breath freshening strips, and a little hair clip in here that fits as well. So it's really nice to have those things stored away so you never have to think every single time, do I have my tweezers? Do I have a pencil sharpener? And the size difference between that mini moisturizer and what I'm normally using at home, you know, it, it just really really helps to have a mini. So that always goes with me and it's in that top little pouch. And then, oh, I popped in a hand cream too. Plenty of room for that. I love this e.l.f. Holy Hydration Remedy Hand Cream been helping my hands so much now that I'm remembering to use it consistently. Also, I did my nails. I did my nails with my Le Mini Macaroon Gel Nail System. I know they're really short, but they feel very finished right now. And they went through all of my packing, all of my travel, no chips at all. They still look really fresh. So love that. What else 
is floating around up here. I did take a couple hair clips because I use these quite often just for like grabbing everything back in a ponytail or pulling half back. I'm um, just pulling my hair back when I do my makeup. And then all of my brushes and tools are up top. So I did take a little triangle sponge. Of course, my Shiseido Lash Curler. My e.l.f. Complexion Duo Brush, definitely a must-have. It's great to have those two sides in one. And I don't love traveling with a beauty blender or similar type of sponge. I just don't want to have to worry about using it in the morning. And then we leave that day and I need to pack it away and I'm putting it damp in a bag. Even if it's in some kind of little vented pouch, it's probably getting zipped up into a bag ultimately. And I just don't like that idea. So this really dictates the kind of foundation I take, but I want it to to be something I can use with a brush and this brush is great because it does concealer and foundation. These other brushes, I mean you've seen me use them a million times, my BK Beauty 107, great for bronzer all over powder, e.l.f. blush brush, Real Technique setting brush for highlights, my big five eye brushes. I've got a couple here from Profusion, the one I always start out with in my crease, one to blend with, also the small pointed brush for like outer corner or smudgy liner, and then two sizes of flat brushes, my Morphe flat brush and my small flat pointed brush. It's not a ton of brushes, but it's definitely what I use on a regular basis for a full face look. So all of that stuff, again, plus this little pouch just fits perfectly in that top zip up area. Then when you open it up, y'all, here's what you've got on top a zippered area there, which could hold a number of things. I could picture a long skinny palette going up there and being nicely protected. I like using it for my smaller products like liners, any kind of stick product. And then down in here, look at what you have here. We have multiple pouches with kind of a larger open intersection. And you can see that it's fitting a couple of palettes in there and then all different kinds of makeup that are basically categorized all around the outside. Sorry, this camera angle isn't better, but this is the best lighting to see down in it. I've got some complexion things right here. I've got powders. I've got bronzer and blush, a couple random stick products, and lips right in these pouches. And I know there are a lot of people who get these divided makeup organizers on Amazon. You've probably seen them. They look super sturdy, and that may be a big selling point for some people. But what I love so much about the divisions in this bag is that they're they're movable. There's some flexibility, so you can store different things, and you got a little wiggle room there. Plus, it's all something you can completely wipe down. Can you see how the lining is all this? It's all something you can wipe down absolutely everywhere within every pouch. And then in the center section, it's actually quite large. I'm not utilizing it to the fullest here, but I've got a couple good size palettes and even some more makeup down in the center pouch as well. So it's ample room for your makeup here. And I'll take you through what's in each of these pouches so you can kind of know where my head's at for doing makeup. If I'm traveling somewhere and it is just going to be sort of an everyday type of scenario for a couple days, I want to have two different looks that I can do. One that's kind of like a little bit more my everyday look and then also something lighter. The things that can make it more glam would be a foundation that has a little more coverage, um, maybe a set of lashes if you were going out and you wanted to be able to wear those, perhaps some fuller coverage, more bold lip colors, but then on the lighter end maybe that means taking a tinted moisturizer as an option option. Maybe a full face or multitasking palette that has a lot of steps in one that you can kind of breeze through if you're in a hurry. Um, maybe it's taking a brow thing that can be a real easy one step brow as opposed to busting out a smaller pencil. So there are a few little decisions you can make to where either look is fine. Also, I will say doing makeup when you're on some kind of family vacation like this. I realize here I don't speak for everyone, so I'll just speak from my perspective. I'm an early riser, okay? I'll be the kid at the sleepover who wakes up early. <laughs> so even when I travel, I can't just like slumber for an extra three hours. That just doesn't feel natural to me. Plus I've got little kids. So I just kind of naturally wake up when I do. We had a little even time zone shift being where we were. And yeah, I just generally wake up before other people. That's just how I roll. So uh, I'm gonna get up. I do my makeup because I love doing it. It does not feel like a chore to me. It feels like, oh, this is a little bit of quiet time where I can just kind of wake up for the day, you know, and be with myself. I know I don't have to justify to you all why I love makeup. You you get me. You feel me. We've been through this. But whereas some people might be like, oh, you got up and did your makeup already? I'm like, 
yeah, I just love to do my makeup. It feels right to me. Waking up early is a good time to do it. I don't like the thought of everybody's gathering and mingling and then M just kind of disappears for half an hour out of the group and does her makeup. I don't like leaving the group, so I'll just do it before everybody wakes up. And the kids aren't bugging me and it's quiet time. Even on vacation, you can definitely use some quiet time. I might even say especially on vacation when your house is full of 12 little kids, <laughs> you need some quiet time. So in terms of base products, I took a primer that I always like the look of. It's the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. Oh, I had a little sunscreen. I took it out of my bag. I swear I didn't take another thing out of my bag, but I randomly stored my sunscreen back in my sunscreen drawer. But anyway, um, that's the last thing that goes on before this primer. Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer with the 12-hour makeup grip. Um, it is not one of those super sticky gripping primers, but I swear it helps staying power. It's worth applying. And also, you know, I didn't do every serum that I would normally use in the mornings. My skin is probably not as well prepped as it is at home, so having a little extra moisture in your primer is helpful. Foundation I pack. Now we have to go into another side story about the environment you will be applying your makeup in. You don't know what you're gonna get. I mean, we happen to have a beautiful big bathroom that we were working with, and it was just like our family. It was hooked onto our room that we were staying in, in this Airbnb. So I had plenty of space to like drag out my stuff. It was a good amount of surface area. It was a decently bright bathroom. Lighting can be sketchy when you're traveling. Um, you might want to take a little mirror like what I have sitting right in front of me here that's portable and folds down and battery operated with a light, but I didn't think to take that this time, so I was just at the mercy of what I got there, and plus natural lighting. You might say, well, just set up in front of a window, but if you're waking up before a lot of people, you probably don't have natural light. So a little trick, if you're in a bathroom and it's not great lighting, like this was okay but not ideal in my setup, if you got lights up above, Tilt your head up, especially for certain steps of makeup like applying your foundation, applying your concealer, putting your bronzer on, knowing where that needs to go and if it's blended. Sorry, memory card filled up and I had to stop, but um, this may be total common sense to everyone, but maybe not everyone, so I'm just gonna say it. If you got a little mirror or you've got a palette with a mirror in it, for especially for those steps and you're not dealing with great head-on lighting in your bathroom that you're working with, tip your head up toward the nearest overhead light and that will give you the most direct look at how things are looking on your face and you can see like, okay, did I blend that everywhere? Does this look somewhat normal. You know, you just it tip up to the light at times. Um, and then when you're doing eyes, assuming the room is generally well lit enough, you don't need to do your entire eye look, maybe tilt it upward. But for those main trying to get an overall look at your face steps, tip your head up in the direction of the nearest overhead lighting source and you can get the most even lighting on your face. That being said, the foundation I took is something very reliable, um, something I'm very familiar with, something I knew that no matter if I was in a cruddy lighting situation or a great one, it would work fine. And it's my wet and Wild Photo Focus in Soft Beige. It's the matte formulation, and I know that it can be blended well with a brush. I said I'm not taking my beauty blender with me. I need brush-friendly application, even though I've been like addicted to this foundation for days. Um, this is full coverage. I like to apply it with a sponge, and also full coverage foundations aren't a total gimme, okay? They're not always the easiest to apply. There's more of a margin for error in terms of like, if you don't get that blended perfectly, it shows more. So if you knock down the coverage just a little bit with something like this and you apply it with a brush, this shade could not be more like my perfect shade. So it's easy for me to work with this on the go and not be in my ideal setting. So works great with this brush. So I knew, all right, that's something I don't have to even worry about. But then we talked about giving yourself the possibility or the opportunity to do an even lighter, quicker look, in which case you bring a tinted moisturizer. I went with Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator in the shade Light. Then I brought a corrector. This Bobbi Brown corrector stick is so handy because it's in a stick form. This is all fitting down, by the way, in one little chunk of my pouch. So I love this in the shade Bisque, and it's just great to swipe in on the eye area. I knew I'd probably be low on sleep, so this would work really nicely. Low on sleep because we were sleeping with Bubba in our bed with us. And as kids do, he went completely sideways. I also took my Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Fair, I believe it is, yeah. And I just feel like this is a really, again, an easily blendable shade, easy for on the go, doesn't take me a lot of work. I don't have to be in the perfect setting to get it right, okay? So that's also going down in this little pouch. And I even took this Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. It's a little more coverage, um, still really thin, lightweight. I wear that in the shade 1N. I'm not sure really why I took that. I didn't use it. I just did the Age Rewind, but all that stuff I just mentioned, 
one pouch, okay? And there's still movement in there. There's still room for probably at least another foundation if I wanted to take it or a couple more concealers. Okay, moving around the bag, I've got three powders in my next pouch. Not every pouch is the same. The ones that are along the long side of the bag are a little bit bigger. Um, so I just threw in a few different powders. I'm not big on traveling with loose powder. Even though some have really nicely protected capping mechanisms, it's just not ideal and feels a little fussy. So I took my Rimmel Stay Matte, which I used with my little um, hot pink powder puff thing. And I use that every day to set my makeup, set my under eye. And then um, I took an extra powder because I thought, you know, it's probably gonna be a little more humid, a little more clammy. Um, and it really was compared to Southern Illinois. We were going into a little more heat. It was generally in the 60s every day. And, in, and the air just really felt heavy and I got oilier. So I thought maybe I'll just use a little light dusting of something like this infallible powder all over my skin. Skin, and I think it helped the staying power of my makeup. I also took this little Besame powder. It's their violet powder. It's really nice for a touch up, but I didn't really get into any makeup touching up scenarios. Is there still way more room in that pouch? Yes, and way more room in this next pouch that only housed a couple of items here. I took my Rimmel Natural Bronzer because I just, I'm loving this one right now. This is such a current fave, the shade Sun Bronze. I'm wearing that today as well, and I'm really sporting all things from my travel bag today. Just so you can see sort of the type of look it all turned out. Um, I'm wearing the, the Wet n Wild foundation. I'm wearing the corrector, the Age Rewind concealer, Rimmel Stay Matte powder, and also this bronzer. Sometimes the logic behind what I take is like stuff that I'm testing and I want to keep some new stuff front of mind. Sometimes it's stuff that has just a real great travel ease of application. And sometimes it's just stuff I'm loving. And this is something I'm just loving right now. Also took my Instant Cheekbones and Sophisticated Sable. This is blush and highlight in one. And if you saw that CoverGirl video, you know it's just a brilliant product, absolutely brilliant. Um, working our way still around the bag, we're now to this little pocket right here. And I'm really digging into Makeup by Mario right now because I ended up getting his eyeshadow palette. I think I had it in my Sephora cart two different times and it ended up selling out both times. I went and bought it from his own website. But in addition to that, I've been trying some of the other things that I have. I've had this raspberry blush stick. I'm actually wearing a little bit of this today. It looks wildly intense, but actually can blend out to be very, very natural. These sticks have a brush on the other end, but it's not my favorite blending method. And I actually forgot to take um, the type of brush I would really like to blend these out with, which is a Sephora 56. So real life, things get forgotten. And I didn't end up using these sticks. I bought the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. Oh my gosh, what a tongue twister. Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. I purchased this when I got my palette and I have been playing with it some, but I didn't use it on this trip. Again, didn't have the ideal application method. We'll call it the Mario pouch. Also in the Mario pouch, I got this little lip duo when I ordered the palette as well. And this is the Ultra Suede Sculpting Lip Pencil in Hue. And the lipstick is called Sam. And this was said to be like the pinky nude lip combo. So I've played with that a time or two, but I really didn't end up using it on this trip. So we've covered everything except these lip pouches and what's in the middle. I'm going to talk about what's in the middle first. I think it's great to travel with a full face palette if you have something that contains a lot of stuff steps because you honestly will breeze through your makeup so much faster with this. This is the latest release of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palettes and here what I have is a bronzer, two blushes, highlight, and finishing powders. And the speed with which I can do my makeup and bounce between those after popping on, you know, a little foundation concealer and powder, you know, it's quick. Also, I believe the day we left, I just used a couple of these on my eyes and put on mascara and was done. A palette like this is very handy, whether it's your full on makeup day or it's something lighter. You know, we took a family picture and I, I wanted to have stuff that would look nice for that as well. But this is one of those products that can look good on your fanciest day, but it can be good for speed mode as well. And the eye palette palette that I took. I would normally probably take multiple eye palettes because I just can't decide and I want to have options. But this trip was good for me because it forced me to keep my focus on one thing and one thing only. And it was this new Makeup by Mario palette. I'd been using it in the days leading up to this trip. And um, this was the only eye palette I used while I was there. One day I did an all matte look with this. Prior to the trip, I've experimented with some of the shimmers as well. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm not quite ready to give my full review. I'm wearing it today and I used 
used some of the gold shimmer for the first time. But it does do a very good job of creating a very naturally shadowed eye, and I felt like the shadows always blended well, and like I said, even not being in my ideal lighting, it was very easy to work with. And I had all my brushes that I'm super familiar with and love, so that was fine. Also in the middle compartment, I just have my Milani eyeshadow primer floating around in there. I took my superhero mascara, which I know I will love under any circumstance, whether it's just a shadow and mascara day, which it, that's what it is today, or if I'm dolling up the look even more, this is great. And my Cali Ray come hell or high water, that's on the lower lashes. Oh, I threw in Lash Paradise as well. I forgot I brought that, but loving that one. I didn't use these, but I threw in a little half lash in case I wanted to be a little more glam. Um, I actually arrived there in a lash as well, so I had two different lashes options if I wanted to use them. In the little lip compartments, there's still so much extra room, but I'll just share what I took. I took Live on the Edge, which I'm wearing this today paired with another product, but this is so handy. This particular Superstay Matting Crayon, because my look always feels more finished with this. We're talking deep, dusty rose. Um, it kind of acts like a jumbo lip liner for me some days, blending in with other things, or great worn alone and long wearing. But I actually put that over the top of this Winky Luxe. The one from that trio kit that I reviewed that smells like coffee and it has those three stripes there. Oh, it's the best smell. This has really emerged as my favorite one from that kit and um, that's what I'm wearing today. This topped with the Maybelline. Um, I took a lifter gloss in the shade Moon just because I always love that alone or paired with something else. I brought a couple of my Kosas Sport Lip Fuel things because I just love these. Um, one is more pinky, it's called Rush. One is more nude and it's the shade Flow. Um, these came out of that trio pack for the holidays and I love them. I definitely use those. I brought my Cover Girl Clean Tinted Balm in the shade Bliss You Berry, which we know is just an M standard here. I'm gonna give you that Clinique Black Honey look on your lips. And I took one of these M glosses. These are really comfortable. The Everglass Lip Dew in the shade Temptress. This is kind of like a toasty, I would say rosy brown type of color. So I took that as well and I did use it. So all those lip things could easily fit into to one pouch. I just separated them out into two. And then let's quickly mention what's up in that little zippered compartment. Let me show you that real quick. So this zipper area here I think is just nice for pencils and just any kind of slim product you have. I mentioned earlier giving yourself options. If you're doing a more precise, slightly more glam look and you want to have like a little brow pencil, this is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. Or just take your Glossier Boy Brow. This can either set this look or it can be used all on its own. That's a great way to give yourself an option and greatly speed up your look if you need it. I stuck a lash glue in there, my Esquito lash glue. I put in um, a liner here, the Their Real Extreme Precision Liner from Benefit. It's a good black liner and a liner pen is always the easiest. I have a couple of lip liners. I grabbed my NYX uh, lip liner in mauve and also my Revlon Color Stay lip liner in nude, which we know is kind of a deep toasty nude and it can pair with pretty much every other lip product you saw me mention. And I brought my NYX Epic Smoke Liner this is an eyeliner and I did use this um, as smudgy lower liner that can last on your lower lash line a little bit better than eyeshadow um, and it gives you some nice natural looking definition. So all that jazz, all that stuff was just in this nice little zipper pouch which again could accommodate more. The moral of this story is I feel like I have a lot in here but it all every space in it could accommodate more. I am so thankful for Kristen for recommending this. Um, they have a lot of different styles of bags on their website, but this one called The Stylist is just so, so handy. I would take it more from Kristen than from me because I don't really travel that much. I'm coming off of like a huge traveling hiatus here just from COVID. Having little kids, I, I just haven't had a lot of scenarios where I've been traveling a whole bunch, but she travels a lot for her job. And I'm not positive that she's still using this, but if at any point in time this passed the Kristen test, it's saying something. So I really love mine. It's got this nice little strap up here. I'm trying to think if there's any other features I didn't mention. I just absolutely love it and hopefully this video just gives you a little insight on packing makeup. Um, I know not everybody has the same style or mindset as me and that's totally fine. Makeup is something that I will always do pretty much every day whether I'm on my home base or not so it's good to have some things that you can take that you know are going to be reliable products for you um, that you can apply in pretty much any environment and if there's any other takeaway from this video just the thought of giving yourself an option, you know, an option between having
having a more done up look or a really, really natural look, providing yourself with just the addition of a few different products, uh, more than one way to go with your look. Oh man, also I can't believe I didn't mention this yet, but I pack as I get ready in the morning. So we left on Friday, I was here getting ready Friday morning, and as I applied my makeup that day, I put it in the bag, okay? Even if, let's say, I put on something that I wasn't gonna take, it prompted me to think, okay, pack a concealer, pack some powder, even if I used a different one here at home. So definitely packing as you apply keeps you from forgetting things. So that's all my friends. Thank you so much for taking time to watch. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have had and continue to have safe travels throughout the holiday season. And I will see you guys again very soon. I love you. Bye.